Charles Brownstein of the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is going to join me here at C2E2. And first off, that's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of abbreviate that. But I did want to chat with you because I see your booths at almost every major convention. And the work you do is very important, especially for those of us who love independent right. comic books and creator-owned IPs and so forth. Right. So, Charles, the first thing I would ask is, what does the Defense Fund do? Sure. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund protects the freedom to read comics. And so for almost 30 years, we have been going to court on behalf of retailers, on behalf of artists, and lately on behalf of readers to defend their rights when they are being prosecuted for the comics they make or they sell or they read. And we also provide a lot of education and assistance in schools and libraries when people are trying to actually ban comic books. And so if you go to cbldf.org, you can see that Every week, there's instances of censorship somewhere that we are getting involved in to protect the rights to read and make and enjoy comic books. And I would say that much of our audience out there, they probably are like me. They read banned comic books and would be shocked to find some of the comic books that have been banned. Yeah, uh, Jeff Smith's Bone is one that just boggles my mind. How could that ever be banned? Well, you know, when I started working at the CBLDF 13 years ago, I'd resigned myself to a life of defending stuff that makes me personally uncomfortable. I never in a million years yes. thought I would find the fun defending things, you know, middle grade books for middle grade readers like Bone, like Drama, you know, like so many others that are now on these lists. But yeah, we're seeing a real increase of people trying to take away books from schools and from public libraries because they disagree with certain viewpoints, because they disagree with certain subject matters. And so the position the fund finds ourselves in is that if you don't think a book is appropriate for your home, that's absolutely your prerogative as a parent. We're not saying that every book is right for every reader or every household. How I mean, not everyone's going to get a subscription to heavy metal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, but if you, but you can't extend that beyond your own home. You can't say, you can say I don't want my kid reading Bone for whatever reason, but you can't say I don't understand I don't, what the reason would be. You can't say I don't want your kid to not read Bone. And that's what's happening when people go into libraries or schools and say you can't have this on the shelf. And so we speak out against that and we have some real positive results. And in reality, those folks who are trying to ban graphic novels and comic books, they're really trampling on first amendment rights. They are. And I think, you know, these are well-meaning people. Nobody wakes up sure. in the morning and goes, aha, I'm going to take away all of the fun. You know? I do, personally, but, but it's you know, only my own fun. They, they, but, they, but, you know, they are well-meaning, but it's a misguided approach. You know, we need more speech, not less speech. And so, yeah, the First Amendment protects, to your point, all manner of speech. The First Amendment protects the opportunity to compete in the marketplace of ideas. Now, that means if you want to say something sexist or racist, the First Amendment protects you, but if people call you out on it, they protect them as well. That's what the First Amendment is for. Is for. You can't take away ideas because it's offensive. You, what you can do is respond to them. Right. There is no law against being misinformed. Right. It's putting it nicely. Very nicely. Yes, exactly. Now, give me uh, just real quick a few examples of some of the work that the fund has done. Sure. We are very active in producing education resources. So if you go to cbldf.org, you'll see that we have a lot of toolkits to help teachers and librarians in using comics, to help parents in using comics. We have a robust publication program. We publish a quarterly news magazine called The Defender. We publish education resources like Raising a Reader, how comics can help your kids love to read. And we also go to court on a regular basis. You know, we have retained counsel on staff that are there to pick up the phone when somebody calls and says, help, the FBI has just taken my computers. They're alleging this manga that I have is obscene. What can you do? And we swoop in and we help. You don't hear about those cases because we kill them before they go to court. Right. And that's our job. One thing I've always noticed as well, every year you release a book that's a lot of artists, a lot of different uh, writers get together and they create stories that's exclusively for the fun. Yep. Does that come out at San Diego Comic-Con? 
Uh, the Liberty Annual is published by Image Comics. It comes out every October. And, uh, and, and, but you might be thinking of the hardcover collection that came yes, out of San Diego. that's what I'm thinking. It's a uh, hardcover. Yeah, which is still available from the fund. It's still available from your local comic book store. So please go check it out. It's got a cool Paul Pope cover. Uh, but that, that collection collects the first five years of it. And since then, uh, Scott Alley has guest edited it. Um, Lauren Sankovich guest edited it last year. And we're working on one this year that is going to be coming out in October as well. I do notice at the various conventions you also have a lot of signed books, yep. a lot of signed graphic novels as well to help uh, yeah, incent people to, uh, to join the fund and to support the fund. Now, as far as there's various different membership levels people can have as well. So for those out there who want to protect their right to read pretty much whatever they want, You've already mentioned the website a few times. How can they help support the fund? Sure. The easiest way to support the fund is to make a donation, and we make it easy for you because, as you mentioned, we have a lot of great supporters. And so, you know, looking over your shoulder at the table, everybody from Grant Morrison to Paul Pope to Gail Neil Simone Gaiman. to Alan Moore to Neil yeah, Gaiman right. have signed books to support our work. So you can go there and, you know, contribute, you know, an amount of money appropriate to the book. You know, some books are $20, some are a $40 donation, some are higher, and get a signed book. Or you can become a member and add your name to the list of folks that are supporting our work, and we'll send you cool things like patches and T-shirts. And through all of it, the peace of mind to know that you're helping us have the resources we need to keep comics safe. So in other words, you want to head over to that website. Mention the website one more time, Charles. CBLDF.org. See, that's, it's easier to come off your tongue than mine. No, yeah, you can try it. I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> CBLF. It's right there. Yeah, right. C CBLDF.org. I'm lucky I can say, speak English. <laughs> Charles, thank you so much My pleasure. for thank sharing you. some time because we want to make sure that everyone has the right to read comics that don't get banned. Thank you. <laughs>